this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze the data for IB physics. On my screen, you can see I have some data. It came from using echoes to measure the speed of sound using Audacity. And that's how we've got these times to be so accurate. So let me just work through what we have here. So I have my independent variable was the distance between my recording device and the wall. I have my dependent variable being the time it take for the echo to come back. And there was a lot of variation and it was very easy to do. So you can see I've actually done more than the three trials. I have five trials here. And then at the end we have calculating the average. Now some of you might say I'm mixing my raw data and my process data and in previous versions of the IB syllabus that was important. You don't need to separate it anymore. So one of the first things I want you to see is that when you record your measurements notice that they all have to have the same number of decimal places and that's because you're using the same measuring tool so you should have the same amount of precision in each of your measurements. Over here, my average cannot have more precision than my measuring tool. For example, I didn't all of a sudden get an extra decimal place or division of millimeters on my ruler. One of the things that my table is missing right now is I don't have any units. So let me go ahead and put them in here. Distance, um, measured in meters, this should be time, trial, number. That's going to be measured in seconds. So my average measured in seconds. OK, so let's say I had a ruler that was measuring to the nearest 10 centimeters. So it had markings 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters. Maybe I used a trundle wheel rather than an actual meter stick. Now, if I can measure to the nearest 10 centimeters, you can see here that these values are actually written not to the nearest centimeter, but plus or minus 50 centimeters. So these all should have a decimal zero. When you look at my time values, you can see that um, I have three decimal places. These were actually from a digital system which only gave me the final value. In this case it's going to be plus or minus 0 0.001. All of these units and uncertainties need to be in our headers. In your data table I should only see values. No text in these tables. Now, how do I come up with the uncertainty? This is the uncertainty of the actual measurement. But you can see here in this distance that I actually have quite a bit more uncertainty than would be accounted for by just using the audacity. So we're going to use the range by two method. What that means is you take the highest value minus the lowest value and then we calculate the difference. In the first case, I'll have 0 0.042 minus the smallest one, 0 0.033. Take that value, and I'm going to divide by 2. Now, uncertainties can only have one significant figure, so you're going to have to round that. In my case, I'll have decimal 0, 0 or five, but that would be rounded to decimal zero, zero, 005. Now, if you're looking at these numbers going, oh my goodness, I've got so much error, that's not an indication of you and you making a mistake, rather than an indication that there's something with the method and it means that you'll have a little bit more analysis to do in your evaluation. One last thing I want to point out is when you go through 
and you do this. I always suggest that at the bottom of your table you put a justification for your uncertainties. So, for example, with the distance. I said it was measured by a trundle wheel. When you're going to go and process this data and you're going to graph your independent first variable on the x-axis, your dependent on the y-axis, you're going to use just your average values and not all of these different time trials. You also will use these uncertainties here when you make your error bars.